Good morning, everyone. We are back with our weekly stuffing for our 12 month binder. We are also going to be stuffing our five savings challenges from Jordan Budgets. And off to my left hand side here, I do have my 100 envelope challenge. So with that being said, one of the things I'm going to repeat and show you again is the 100 envelope challenge on how you don't have to fail at it. A lot of times when I'm just going through videos and things on YouTube, I've seen a lot of YouTubers saying that they have failed at the 100 envelope challenge. So I'm going to repeat the information I've given you before on how not to fail at the 100 envelope challenge regardless of your income. So with that being said, we're gonna start with January through June. I have my 12 months broke down into two different binders because I don't want it too thick and I wanna be able to flip my envelopes super easy. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll repeat and talk through this so that the new subscribers on here will know exactly what we're doing each week on Mondays. So, we have January through June in this binder. January is the birthday month for Jessica and Philip. Jessica will be turning 13, y'all, next January on the 31st. And Philip will be turning 12. So you can see how close in age they two are. Um, they're just six days of exactly one year apart. So in this envelope, I collect money for both of their birthdays. They do not want gifts, y'all, which is so super cool that my kids don't want gifts. They just want the hard, cold cash. They are both gamers, so they both want Xbox gaming cards. So I am going to put $200 into this envelope for each kid. Now, since Philip has recently got an Oculus headset Quest 2, he is playing games off there as well. So I will find out if he wants to divvy it up between Xbox and the Oculus headset uh, for gaming or what he would like to do. And I know Jessie, she wants to divvy it up between her games and she loves to go and get her own snacks. So she'll probably run to the candy section, the chip section, and buy herself some snacks. I have capped the snacks off. I don't want her to overdo it. And the rest will probably be going gaming very quickly. Also in this envelope, I also stick um, money in here as well for them to have a happy birthday meal. They get to choose the restaurant. This time Uber Eats is going to bring it to us. So I know both of them have said they want a McDonald's. So they will get McDonald's and anyone else in the household will also be able to choose off the McDonald's menu as well for the um, happy birthday dinner. And I'm also saving for their cakes. So here's how I set it up. I'm going to pull my fives, my ten, and my twenties. So, at the beginning of every single month, I do a twenty for Philip, and I do a twenty for Jessica. With these two twenties is what I do every month. My goal is to get them each to $200 by January. I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, being able to do this in a smaller fashion over time versus trying to come up with $400 plus cake plus meals is ridiculous because the birthday is right after Christmas, y'all. And my husband and myself and my brother are all Christmas time babies. We're all December babies, I should say. And we also have Christmas that time. So we've got too much going on to just foul swoop, try to come up with all that money at once. So they each have $60 in here right now. I went ahead offline off camera and went ahead and condensed their money down so I am putting in a 20 that will give them each 80 so next month y'all and I only do this once a month for their birthday money they will each be able to trade these out for a $100 bill y'all oh my gosh we'll be halfway there and we'll be halfway there literally in September so that is for that now in the back I made a boo-boo and gave you the wrong denominations last time I did my stuffing last week so, they did not have already $40 in here. Um, or, I'm sorry, $45. So, I thought they were going into the $50 range. They have currently $40 in here for their Uber Eats meal to be delivered to the house. That's anybody in the house. Danya, Jessica, Philip, and myself will be in the house. My daughter, Tori, will already be back home in Oklahoma by then with my grandson. 
Um, they currently are staying up here until early January. So after that, they will be going back home. So um, it'll just be the four of us. We'll be able to choose off the menu for McDonald's. This is also for their birthday cakes. And every single week, I just stuff a $5 bill into this for those purposes. So that completes Jessica and Philip. So now they are both up to $80 for their birthday money so far out of 200. And now we are up to $45. So I thought $45 last time, but no, we were only up to 40. So I made a mistake and I was about $5 off the envelopes. So I went ahead and needed to correct that. February, we don't do anything in February. We just stuff a $5 in for now. I'm thinking that my cap off is gonna be about $150 because my kids only get like a Valentine's candy box for me for Valentine's Day. We don't do anything drastic and it is also me and my husband's anniversary on Valentine's Day. So, currently 40 is in here. We're sticking a $5 bill in here as well. Okay, going into March. March is my mom's birthday and I am saving up $100 for her. She currently has 40 in here. I will reach $100 here really, really soon. And with that, I will get her a gift card for a meal place that she wants to go to, whether she wants to go to Olive Garden or if she wants to go to, go to um, Red Lobster or Golden Corral or wherever they would like to go. This is for her. Um, to have a meal out on me and the kiddos and for her and her husband basically to go out. So currently she has 40 in here as well. So this is another five. She can choose whatever place she would like. I probably won't be giving her a card that is specific to one restaurant. I will probably just send down like a Visa gift card or something like that in her birthday card envelope so she can choose where she would like to go. So that is March and she will be 70 next March. April is Danya, and I do the same thing with her that I do with the other kiddos. I give her $20 every single month for her birthday money, because she is going to get $200 as well. Okay, pull out hers. She currently has $50, and $10 is $60. So this makes $80. And with that, now there's a change up with Danya. Danya will be $14 next April on the 29th of April. However, a subscriber told me instead of taking all the kids to Golden Corral, both in January and in April, due to the fact that I have to take Uber to and from Golden Corral, and it has to be an Uber XL. And Uber X only allows up to three passengers. And Uber XL allows four to six passengers. It is more expensive, and it's crazy ridiculous, because to go 15 minutes from my house to Golden Corral, it's gonna cost us roughly about 20 bucks. Same coming back home. So we're looking at $40 round trip for literally 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. Golden Crown for Jessica, Danya, Philip, and myself to eat at is roughly about $50. We do tip as well, very well there. And you know, she also needs to get a birthday cake. So she currently has $80 for her birthday, for her birthday money. Danya does not wanna do gaming or anything like that. She legit wants just a Visa gift card. She wants to be able to shop for herself, whether it be Amazon or Walmart or whatever she wants to shop for. So she'll get $200 for her birthday. I put $20 per month in there for her birthday. I will have this already done and shut down well before her birthday because it's not until the 29th of April. Um, but I also stick $5 per week in here to help build up for the transportation round trip for all four of us to go to Golden Corral. Um, take the Uber to and from for the meal and for her birthday cake. So she currently has 40 back here. This makes $45 towards that. I think I'm going to cap that off at 150. I think we would be good for the meal, the transportation, and her cake at 150. So that is April. May gets a $5 as well. And this is for Mother's Day next year. My mom will get half this money. The other half of the money will be split between my three kids so they can go out and buy me a Mother's Day gift each. So right now, that had 40, now we're up to 45. All right, June, we're gonna switch a little bit. We started switching this a little bit ago. So in June, 
we're actually, instead of putting a $5 bill in now, we are starting to put $10 bills in. This has $60 currently in here. So June covers my grandson's birthday. He just turned three on the 5th of June. And it also covers Father's Day, which is my, my husband's uh, Father's Day from my kids. Now my kids aren't from my current husband, they're from my ex-husband, but I don't make a distinguishment between past and present. Um, my kids love my husband and they wanna get him a Father's Day gift. So with that being said, $5 is for Father's Day, $5 is for my grandson Adonis. And I plan to cap him off at $200 for my grandson and probably about $100 for my husband. So that is what we have for that. And that completes January through June. So we will put this one aside and we are gonna go through July through December now. Now I don't know what's going on with my July card. I'm missing it again, guys. <laughs> I don't know if I did something with it. I took it out to do something and I can't remember where it's at. So July, I will have to get a new card put in here and I will be doing that probably today. Um, July is getting a five. My father just had his birthday. He turned 64 on the 17th. And we sent down a birthday card and a meal card for him as well. He currently already has like $40 now sitting in here. When I updated all of my envelopes, I went ahead and threw enough cash in here to get him updated with everyone else. At $100, I will cap this off. I will do the same with him again next year. What I do with my mom as well is I will give her the $100 gift card and the same thing with my stepdad and they can decide where they're gonna go this time around. So that is five. So now he is up to 45. And he was a little bit lower, but I wanted to make sure that he was equal with all the other envelopes so I didn't get any mistakes. September is also getting a $5 bill. And that, oh no, August, I'm sorry, September's next. August is getting a $5 bill. Nothing happens in the month of August. So it's 45 and I have decided that we are gonna do a meal with this. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a meal with this envelope. Um, it is the month of August. So I will probably stick another $5 bill in here or something. I think 45 should be good. Um, so maybe we'll all choose to eat at Subway this time around. So it will be all three of my kids, plus my oldest daughter, so that makes four of my kids. Um, Tori is 23, she'll be 24 in November. You'll see that here coming up in my November envelope. And with that being said, um, I have my grandson here, Adonis, who is three as well. So all of us, I think, are gonna end up getting a uh, subway. So this envelope will get emptied pretty quickly. I didn't start this at the beginning of the year and that's why it's low on money. It's not like fully funded, but it's okay, it's funded enough. September has 40. Five is going in. And for September, here's what we're gonna do because we have nothing in September and we're at 45 right now. I'm gonna let each one of the kiddos, so far, because we'll be above and beyond what I'm gonna do. They're each going to receive $10 for, full of snacks. So if they want like Takis or chips and juice, or they want their own soda pop or whatnot, it is going to be $10 towards snacks for each one of my kids for their personal snacks. And the last $5 going in for this set of envelopes. I still got November and December, so we're going to switch over here real quickly. Um, let's see, December, November. Yeah, I'm on the right envelope. For October, we're putting in five. This gives me $45. So October, we don't go out on Halloween trick-or-treat anymore. I think my kids are just getting too old for that. Um, it's all about the candy. We know this. So I'm trying to go and wait until a day or two after Halloween to get the candy when it's a little bit more reduced. I don't want it too much reduced where we don't get the candy the kids want. So we'll probably go on November 1st, get them some candy. It is also the birthday month of both Jaya and Tucker. Tucker is my three-year-old Chihuahua. Or, I'm sorry. I wish he was three. Tucker is my eight-year-old Chihuahua. He'll be nine on October 1st. And Jaya is my three-year-old Chihuahua Dachshund mix. She's a Chihuahua. And she will turn four on Halloween. So I'm going to stock up for them to each get a toy. 
I'm also going to stock up right now just a little bit more for to get them some more supplies um, for their homemade dog treats, which includes like canned pumpkin and it has oatmeal and things like that. So I'm going to stock them up with some treats, um, supplies, so I can make them homemade treats. And like I said, they're also going to get a brand new little toy like they need anymore. They've got like 20 toys <laughs> and they love their fluffy blankets. But I think we have way too many blankets right now. I think we up to 10 blankets between two chihuahuas. So we're going to switch over to the last two envelopes here. And that is November and December. November right now has $140 in it, y'all. I was putting $10 bills in it. I'm going to take it up a notch. My daughter's birthday is the 28th of November. She will be 24. I'm trying my best to come up with $400 so that she can get a new wardrobe for herself. So I'm actually gonna start putting $20 in here. I think what I need to do is put $17 per week. Ah, uh, yes, per week in here to reach where I need to go. And I might be a little bit above, but instead of doing 17, I'm gonna do 20. So I might be a little bit above 400 and that's okay. That's for her to get a new wardrobe for herself. Christmas time is up and around the corner a little bit too fast for me this year. I am doing the penny challenge for that as well. I will have over 600. I think I'll be closer to 680 or 690 because I am rounding up on the penny challenge as well. I do the penny challenge once a month. I just, what I do is I take all four weeks, I add it all up, and I stuff that entire amount in one foul swoop. So I haven't gotten that updated yet. That will be coming here shortly because I need to update it for the month of August. Um, make sure that I'm on track, that I did stuff what I needed to for July. And that will also be in with my Christmas as well. So that will be nearly, I believe, $700 or maybe even more when it's over. Because like I said, I am rounding up. So if it's like $12, I'll round up to $15. If it's $19, I'll round up to $20, things like that. So for Christmas, I'm putting in a $20. Right now we got $140. An extra $20 makes $160 on this side for Christmas. My goal is to have a minimum of $1,000 for Christmas. And y'all, we're in August. Like, July just went that fast. <laughs> so anyways, that is July through December. Now we're going to switch gears and we're going into our Jordan Budgets five savings challenges. Now she sells her savings challenges on her Etsy shop. I highly, highly recommend you go and check out her Etsy shop, y'all. I have almost, almost everything just about that she has. <laughs> so I'm obsessed with Jordan. She is just a wonderful person. She is doing fabulously fantastic here. I think she's almost at 25,000 subscribers in one year, y'all. Like, that's crazy. It's crazy good for her. Her business is booming. She just moved into a new house with her kiddos. Y'all, all the things. Please go check out Jordan Budgets. If you haven't yet, please do. And please subscribe to her. She is just, she's phenomenal. The more subscribers she gets, the more excited I am for her and her kiddos. So with that being said, I did choose my five challenges. Now, I already had the challenges, y'all. So I didn't buy the five challenge starter kit. But if you're starting out, please, please start there. Um, you can go and pick your five savings challenges. She'll let you pick out which five that you want. She'll give you a jelly binder, not this binder. This is the binder I had already had. I'm an A6 obsessed person. So I'm trying to do everything I can to keep my A6 binders um, because I'm that obsessed with them. But please run over and check her out. Um, you just get so much good items off of her shop. I'm just obsessed with the shop. Anytime she puts something new, I'm over there jumping over and checking her out. So our first envelope is Picture Day. Now, Picture Day currently has $50 in here. The word picture for me is standing for $10 each. Oh, let me get my 10s over here. And the word day, I haven't even talked to the studio yet. I'm looking for a studio to do my two homeschoolers pictures. So the day will end up being divided by three so if it's like let's say just for easy math it was three hundred dollars to take them to a studio i know it's not gonna be that high each the d the a and the y will each be a hundred dollars in order to get uh their pictures done but i know it's not going to be that high anywhere near so picture stands for ten dollars each because donya is my public school student and she chose to stay in public school she is also a sports fanatic um so she plays a lot of sports as well 
Um, she's in a lot of clubs. She does a lot of volunteer work and she is going into the eighth grade. And I already have $50, y'all. Look how fast this is adding up. I need 70 for her pictures. Her yearbook has already been pre-stuffed for this upcoming year. It's not even due until May, y'all. But I've got an opportunity to buy her pictures and her yearbook at the same time. I need 70 for pictures. I need 30 for the yearbook. The 30 is already pushed aside and ready to roll. This is my second to last 10 that I need to stick in. So this makes $60, y'all. I got 10 more to go. Next week, I will be fully funded and stuffed. And she doesn't even start school until August 22nd, y'all. Look at this. I'm going to have pictures done. I don't have to run around, try to scrape up $70 somewhere on picture day. I have it. It's going to be done. It's going to be dusted. It's going to be finished. So, sorry, I get super excited. All right, memberships. I dropped some memberships, y'all. I really, really did. Now, I've got memberships running around in all different envelope binders. Um, I am going to start my Silhouette Studio finally tonight. I do have my Silhouette Cameo 4. Um, it's up and running. I haven't learned how to use it, y'all. I'm like, ooh, I don't know, because it's a cutter, too, and i got to learn this quick. So, in this one, I currently have, where's my tracker here? I got, I have $50 in here. Now, I believe that I'm going to be dropping uh, Canva Pro. I don't like it. I'm having a hard time with it. I cannot get the sizing right, and let me show you guys, just in case anybody can give me some tips. I'm trying to create trackers in this size as well, which is the A6 size. I love these trackers. Um, I'm creating my own sets and things like that, but I cannot get the sizing right on Canva Pro. Somebody said go resize the pixels, do whatever. Y'all, I have tried everything. I've tried sizing a dollar bill and putting that in. It is not coming out right. Fingers crossed that Silhouette Studio can do it for me. Otherwise, I'm going to a print shop and get rid of the headache that I have and have them design a template that I can use over and over and just put different um, items in mine in different titles and different designs and all that. So with that being said, I have 50 in here now. 10's going in to make 60. So I'm dropping Canva Pro. I am adding on Silhouette Studio. Um, I have dropped a Patreon that I was watching. I just wasn't happy with what was going on quality wise there wasn't but one video per month we were not able to show um the savings challenges that we got on a monthly basis from the patreon so um if i can't show those and i'm paying for them but i cannot show those and we're only getting one video it just was not um what i expected so i did drop a patreon i added the studio uh cameo studio is or I'm sorry, Silhouette Studio is going on. Um, the other one, Canva Pro, I am dropping. And I need to start stocking a little bit more for Insta Ink. Insta Ink right now is at $17.99. I increased it to, I believe, I want to say it's 500 pages per month. Um, I do get three packs of paper when my paper runs low. And it's a really good price for that. So I have all of that coming on board um, because my kids, I get two homeschoolers that we do need the paper for. And then I have gone back to paper planning as well. So that is that for right now. The next one is, I believe, glasses. Is the next one glasses? Yes, glasses right now currently have 70. I'm going to cap this off at 150. My ex-husband has to pay um, for glasses as well. So we split the cost and we are good with that. I forgot I opened my envelope. So what I say, I was at 70. So this would make... Let me see. Did I say I was at 70? What did I say I was at? Yeah, glasses were at 70. I was putting 20s in, and I went down to start putting 10s in. So this is 80. So we're doing well on that one. The next one that I have here is tuition, and then I have repairs. Tuition is my kids' um, Skillshare, which is $155 per year. It's one of their extracurricular activities that they would like to do. We've got 50 in here now. 10 is going to be 60. And so they have Skillshare and then they have an online math that they are starting this year called Teaching Textbook, which literally takes math out of my hands. They grade the math for them. 
Um, they had the video lessons. They have all the lessons for the kiddos. They do it literally on the computer. I did not have to buy math books this year. I do not have to teach math. I can decide what levels they are on per their abilities. And they do have live actual human being tutors that you can talk to for free. Um, it's only, it's less than $50 per kid per year, y'all, like per year per kid. Oh my gosh. So both of them are starting at, uh, like again, Skillshare is $155 um, per year for Skillshare for them. So they can do some really cool things. Last is repairs. It's repairs I need to make in the house that my landlord is not responsible for. I am currently saving for three bedroom doors a bathroom door and a hall closet door they just were kind of ratty and i wanted to replace them so it's at 50. i'm adding in a 10 to make 60. um this repairs are going to be pretty expensive y'all um for the doors we're looking at 500 dollars for doors and we're looking at somebody coming in and hanging them and they do charge a ridiculous amount for that too as well but it is what it is this mama can't do it on my own so that is what we have for this and that is my five savings envelopes challenge from Jordan budgets I'm gonna push that back and we're gonna go to our very last envelope now and I already have it sectioned off so with this dun, 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 dun. okay we're right here with this one just so you know each envelope represents two envelopes so this is the one I wanted to speak about envelope number one and two on the 100 envelope challenge together they equal three dollars right Envelope number three and envelope number four would be $7. So in envelope number one, you'd put $1. In envelope number two, you put $2. In envelope number three, you put $3. In envelope number four, you put four, and then so on and so forth. However, I just doubled up the envelope so that I would only have to stuff 50 envelopes versus 100 envelopes. Now, here's the deal. As it gets harder and you get higher and higher into your envelopes, even if it's one through 100, it is super hard to start stuffing that on a weekly basis. So, don't. This is not a rat race. This is not who comes in first. Who crosses the finish line is the winner. You are the winner regardless of your income and how much you can stuff. If you cannot stuff an envelope completely, stuff it a little at a time. It could take you a month to stuff an envelope. So what? Let it take you a month. If you can only stuff $5 in an envelope, then stuff five dollars if you can only stuff a dollar stuff a dollar and keep stuffing that envelope until it is completely full once it's completely full then you move on to the next you don't have to stuff this in a certain amount of time or fashion this is the great thing about budgets they change you can add you can take away you can borrow from one envelope to put it in another envelope you can borrow from your emergency fund and when it goes down then you're back to restarting that one over for example if you have the one thousand dollar emergency fund saved up and you need to pull from it i had to pull from it when tucker was going into the quote unquote emergency room y'all i'm getting ready to put a pet emergency in i've got two pet emergency um that i can pull from one is from from forever budgets that's what i'm going to do for gia and tucker i'm going to pull it from hands and bands because i have an emergency pet fund from her so i'm going to do it from two because i think it's really cool to get each dog their own little design one so i have both of those already now this is envelope number what is this um 21 and 22 which makes 43 dollars. that is what i'm stuffing today is 43. so let's go back to the 1000 envelope or 1000 emergency fund i had to pull that 150 of that had to come out for tucker um, because his emergency vet visit was $200, y'all. Emergency vet visits at night are extraordinarily expensive. You have to pick him to a pet ER visit. Next day, he had surgery, which was, I already had $300 set aside for his surgery. So his surgery was $250. So $50 of that did pay for the ER visit. I just pulled that ahead of time, hoping that I had enough. So for his, his um surgery the next day because I was quoted 250 was the lowest 300 was the highest so here's what happened I had to pull from my emergency fund $150 out of the 200 for his ER visit and guess what I was able to replace that so if it takes time to replace an emergency fund because you have to pull from it or pull from another envelope or it takes you time to fill a 100 envelope challenge envelope 
then take the time. If I couldn't stick the $43 in here today. This is envelope, again, number 21 and envelope number 22. So most times, if you're doing a 100 envelope challenge and you are doing it in 100 envelopes, you'd only stuff 21. Next time you would stuff 22. I'm combining it. I'm stuffing 43. Say I only had $20 to stick in this envelope. Then I would make a notation on my tracker over here, um, off to my right hand side, that I stuck in 20 and I still need to stick in 23. Next week comes, I can only stick in 10. So I stick in the 10 and I take that 23 that was supposed to be remaining to stuff this entire envelope and now I need to stick in 13. And that's how you'd work it down if you couldn't fill it all at one time. You can work it over weeks. You can work it over months. It doesn't matter. You're not in a race with anybody else and you don't have to stuff it in a record time. You stuff it when you can, how you can, how much you can at a time. And if you can only stick a dollar in, trust me y'all, dollars add up. There is a dollar savings challenge. It's all over YouTube. Budgeters are doing the one and five dollar challenge. You know why? Because it adds up over time, regardless of what people think. It really does. Every dollar does count. So today we're sticking in 43. So we have 20, 40, and three. $43. So this completes our Monday stuffing. Y'all, I promise I'm trying to get back on track. I watched my grandson last night. It was fantastic. My daughter did an amazing Amazon run last night. They kept her in our city this time. She didn't have to go out to Timbuktu. And literally, she did it in, she had three and a half hours to do it. She did it in just under three hours. She made $78 and she only used $5 in gas. So in three hours, she made $73, y'all. Like, wow, that is amazing. If it keeps up that way for her, that is awesome. So that is our cash stuffing for today. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, y'all, I respond to everybody. I read everyone's comments. It don't matter if I had 150 comments, which I don't, but if I ever had like 150, 200 comments down below, y'all, I would respond to every single one of them. I love speaking with y'all. I love getting your suggestions. I love listening to your comments. If you have something great you want to celebrate, leave it in the comment section down below because I will celebrate it with you. I'm excited. There's a couple of people I do know as subscribers who have been long-term subscribers from even my prepper pantry um, days when I was, I had my prepper pantry channel that I took down. Um, we would just talk back and forth, back and forth. You can also go over on Instagram and talk to me there as well. I do have all my contact information linked in the description box below. So go all the way down to the very bottom and you can do that. Now, just a side note, I have been told to add a buy me a coffee account. I thought I had it up and running. Apparently the link isn't working. Someone said the link isn't working. By no means, no means at all, do you ever have to donate to my family whatsoever. I'm never asking anybody to do so. I was asked to put this account up. I did not do it because I wanted to. Um, on my own, I was actually asked to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and rectify that today. So if you see the link in other videos, please don't respond to that buy me a coffee link in the description box below because it doesn't work apparently. It says my account hasn't been set up. So I need to figure out how to get that account set up properly. Once it's set up, I'll put it back in the description box. And if you would like to donate to our family, I'm just letting you know that buy me a coffee actually is going towards the 100 envelope challenge because this is going towards our down payment towards our first home. I will have to complete this challenge four times to hit over $20,000 in order to put that down towards our first home. So with that being said, once again, let me remind you, you never, 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 never have to send me anything. You never have to donate anything to me whatsoever. I'm not a person who asks anybody for anything money-wise or any of that sort. So with that being said, that will complete us for today. We'll catch you in the next video. Until then, always please remember to stay safe. We'll catch you in the next video. Without Limits Budgets is out.